for this. I mean, how, again, how is black power to be attained? And I'm going to use a specific local example from today. And if you have a phone or a tablet, feel free to Google D-Town Farms. That's the example I'm going to, uh, uh, to which I will refer. Uh, Detroit, as we all know, has been devastated by de-industrialization, uh, racist uh, state uh, takeovers of the public schools, and not too far, of course, Flint and the water crisis. Mm -hmm. What are folks, some folks in Detroit trying to do? Mm -hmm. Detroit leads the country with urban farming, and they certainly understand how farming alone will not solve all the problems, but what they emphasize, right, mm -hmm. they talk about Growing food, growing people. Mm -hmm. The Detroit Black Food Security Network. Again, mm -hmm. urban farming, providing nutritious food mm -hmm. for black people, a city of Detroit that's approximately 80% black. And the point that I'm trying to get to, to tie in to my own paper, mm -hmm. and again, building these kinds of genealogies, the co-founder of the D-Town Farms was a mentee of Malcolm X's, mm -hmm. right? Uh, all of these folks regard themselves as Garveyites. Mm. So they're thinking about, again, a self-reliance, self-determination, understanding these intersections of race and class and to varying uh, degrees gender, how these forces operate in a global context, and again, trying to do something about it, right? So again, Louise Little, planting her own food, owning her own land, sharing those lessons with her children, mm. growing food, growing people.